okay guys so i think after uh, one week of break we are resuming the classes again uh, i i confidently believe that you guys forgot what we discussed in the last class right so just in next five ten minutes i'll give you an overview of what happened in the uh, initial six sessions right on session one uh, we had some introduction to this boot camp and also we had introduction to networking so that is what we covered in the first day that was session one Okay, so introduction network. In session two, we completed the OSA model. We just understood what is OSA model, those things and all. Right? In session three, uh, I think we started understanding uh, our network devices, I think so. Network devices. What is a router? What is a switch? How they look like, those things and all. And how basically the connection is done. And also uh, after that, on the same day, we understood what is IP address. Okay, so the range of them and all. And also we understood uh, comparing IP addresses. We found out whether they are in the same number or different network, comparing IP addresses. Okay, yes, and then session uh, four, uh, we uh, started Cisco Packet Tracer Lab, I think so. Okay, Cisco Packet Tracer Lab, we started. Okay, and then we had a small topology, which was uh, you know looking like this. So we had one router uh, connecting it with uh, I think not, not sure how many uh, switches we had on that day. Maybe initially used to have two switches and we had PCs behind them. Yeah, this was the first session. I mean, this was the session four, the lab. Okay, you have PC and we configure IP addresses. No, really 1.1 for this guy, 1.2 for this guy, 1.3 for this guy, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. Okay, so we had this and also I think um, session uh, four also. Uh, sorry, session five, uh, we uh, again, we did Cisco Packet Tracer lab only, but uh, that is a day where we had uh, three uh, interfaces, I think so. I'm not sure in which class exactly what I discussed, but I think after these two interfaces, we had another topology where we had uh, uh, three interfaces. So you guys remember that. Okay, we have uh, 1.1, 1 1, 2.1, and then uh, 3.1, right? So you have, uh, uh, PCs like you know 1.2, 1.3, and then 2.2, 2.3, and then 3.2, 3.3. Yeah, so this is where uh, we understood on session five only we understood there is something called routing table. The router has got a routing table, right? Okay, so yes, okay. so now uh, let me take this uh, and just recall one more time. So we have a router which has got uh, three interfaces, right? Assume you have uh, three switches connected. Uh, switch one, switch two, and then switch three. Okay, we connected like this. And we had uh, PCs also. Okay, so here this was zero slash uh, zero interface. This was zero slash one interface, and this was one slash zero interface. And IP address they had was 1.1 for this guy, 1.2 for this guy, 1.3 for this guy. Okay. And then uh, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, and then we have 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. Yeah. So I think this is a lab, and this is where we understood there is something called routing table. Okay. And we have 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. But actually, the network starts from which IP is? Network starts from 192.168.1.0. Am I correct? Yeah, so 1.0. So 1.0 is the first IP address, but we call this guy as what we call this guy as network address. Network address. Okay, which basically represents all the addresses we know. So basically, this is what we call it as 1.0. Hope you guys remember that. We didn't have a long break, we just had only one week break. Hope you guys remember at least this one point zero in the network address, and this guy was uh, this guy is uh, two point zero slash twenty four, and we have uh, this guy is three point zero slash twenty four. Okay, and uh, when you see the routing table, uh, can can anyone say what is the command to reach uh, to to see the routing table? Please, what is the command? How do I see the routing? Table? What is the command to see the routing table? Can you answer in the chat? Outing table command. Okay. Yeah, it's very good. Show IP route. 
okay very good very good yeah so now um when you have do right if you're in the configuration mode then you can use do and then you can type do show i0 yeah so this uh we did and uh, how the routing table was looking like the routing table was looking like this we had 1.0 right if i see if i write the routing table here 1.0 slash 24 connected to 0 slash 0 interface this is 0 slash 0 interface this is where you have 1.0 connected to right and then we have 2.0 slash 24 that is connected to 0 slash 1 and then 3.0 slash 24 connected to 1 slash 0 okay and also uh, we i asked one question like you know uh, if this pc is trying to send a ping request from 1.2 if he's trying to send request to 2.2 what will happen the ping request will go to the router router will check the destination ip and we'll also check the routing table and where 2.2 comes in the 2.2 is matching in the 2.0 right and what is the exit interface the exit interface is the middle one which is 0 slash 1 so the packet that this guy sent now it will come out of this interface and it will go to this PC. So this also we understood in the last class itself. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so this is this is what I think we covered in the uh, fifth class. We understood about routing table. So now in the sixth sixth class, right? Sixth session. How many people are watching the recordings? Uh, I think they know it because they are frequently watching the recordings, right? So they are just watching the recordings next next so maybe for recording sessions for recording students right this is something that you already know this is for the live class we had a break of one week in between so i'm just recalling these sessions okay so sixth session uh, that is where we had uh two routers hope you guys remember we had router one that is connected to router two okay and in router one we had a couple of networks a switch and you have a pc over here and this is basically 1.0 slash 24 and this is 2.0 slash 24. Yeah, same way router 2 is also connected with a couple of networks. Okay, and this is a 3.0 slash 24 network. And this is 4.0 slash 24 network, right? And assume you have PCs over here as well. Okay, so the IP address are basically like this is 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and this is 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. And this is going to be 3.1. 3.2, 3.3, 4.1, 4 4.2, 4.3. Okay, this is how it was initially. And later we connected a cable between the routers also. Right, we created one, we got one more network, which is the, uh, I think this guy was 5.1 and then 5.2. Okay, so yes, so this is, this is what we discussed in the sixth session in packet tracer initially, and then we went into NG labs also. Okay, so now uh, here, if you take the uh, routing table of the first router, uh, how many interfaces he has got please he has got three interfaces right this is zero slash uh, uh let me write this okay zero slash zero zero slash one and this is one slash zero so in that case this is the interface ip that's 1.1 so in that case is going to be 1.0 got it because you have 1.1 because of that 1.1 the route will have 1.0 slash 24 and which is the interface 1.1 is configured to zero slash zero interface so in that case 1.0 slash 24 is connected to 0 slash 0 interface. That is a network that is connected to 0 slash 0 interface. Next to 2.0 slash 24, that is connected to 0 slash, okay, let me uh, write this properly, 0.2.0 slash 24, that is connected to 0 slash 1. And then 3 point, sorry, not 3.0, 5.0. So 5.0 slash 24 connected to 1 slash 0. So this is the routing table of the first router. Okay. Yeah, can you guys uh, answer me in the chat how the routing table of the second router will look like? These are the directly connected networks. They are DC, directly connected. Yeah. So what interest is it directly connected to the second router? Yeah, you can answer 3.0 is connected, 4.0 is connected, and then 5.0 is connected. Okay. So with the interface, what are the interface is? Zero slash zero interface. 0 slash 1 interface and then 1 slash 0 interface. Please, please interact with me. Uh, the chat is open. You guys can answer in the chat. Okay. Yes. So this is what exactly uh, we have. And uh, with this, we know that uh, with this with this uh, specific configuration, uh, with, with just with this routing table, right? This router has got only three lines in his routing table and this guy has got only these three lines in the routing table. Okay. In that case, when I try to ping from 1.2 to 3.2, 
then of course uh, what happens what is a what is the message that we got is on that day 1.2 is trying to ping the 3.2 okay with the existing routing table when this packet is sent to the router what the router did it was checking the routing table no because the destination ip was 3.2 it was checking with uh, this line no match it was checking with this line no match no match right so when we was checking with all these three lines there is no match so what happened the router returned the packet back to the uh, pc itself saying that the destination host is unreachable okay so dhur destination host unreachable so that's the message that we got from the router okay i hope you guys remember it i'm happy many ways are answering it yeah <clears throat> yes so it didn't work right so then only what we did we configured static routing okay so what does the word static mean by in networking wherever you are wherever you see the word called static then it is called as manual okay so whenever humans go and do something manually we call it a static routing so we're going to go and add static routing uh, in the first router so what in all networks he doesn't know is he doesn't know about 3.0 he doesn't know about 4.0 okay so 3.0 can be reached via 3.0 slash 24 network can be reached via what is the next hop ip address next hop ip will be yeah so you jump on this side and you'll be landing on this destination okay so 5.2 Eight, and then 4.0 slash 24 can be reached via 5.0, the same next to hop IP address. Okay, and again, uh, this is something that we have to do on the uh, first router. And then uh, we did the same thing, right? We configured uh, static routing on the second router also. What network he doesn't know, he, he doesn't know about 1.0 and then 2.0, right? So 2.0 can be reached via what is the next to hop IP address for this? You can jump and land on 5.1, okay. So 5.1 used to be the next to hop IP address. 5.1, 5.1, okay. So 1.0 and 2.0 can be reached via 5.0. So this is what we configured as a static outing, okay. And what was the command that I was using to do this? Do you guys remember the command? Okay, yeah, I'll write. So the command is IP route. You have to get into the configuration mode, okay. You have to go to the configuration mode. First command is EN. And then you have to type con the configuration terminal. And then you have to type IP route. And then we have to uh, give the destination network, which is 3.0. I'm simply putting it as 3.0, but actually it should be 180, 3.0. Right? And then what is the mask? The mask is 255.255.255.0. So this is the mask. So this is the destination network. 192.3.0. This is the destination network's mask. And what is the next to hop IP address? The next to hop IP address is 5.0, which is again 192.168.5.0. So this is how we uh, create a static routing. So IP route to 3.0 network, uh, submit mask is 255.255.255.0. And then the next to hop IP address is 5.0. So likewise, so I just gave the example of this command. Uh, the command that I wrote here is the uh, command for this network. So 3.0. This is what I wrote here. Okay, yes, so this is a command to set the uh, routing static routing for 3.0. So, accordingly, you can also understand how it is for 4.0. For 4.0, you just want to go and add 4 over here. Okay, and how do you add this? So, you know, you know, you can dynamically understand how the static routing is going to happen. Okay, so till this point, we discussed in the last days, and also I think uh, we did the same thing on ng labs also. ng labs. Okay. And I uh, hope you guys uh, practice the lab is please again, uh, based on uh, you know, the huge demand only, I started giving the recordings on daily basis. Right? As soon as this class is over, I'll give the recorded sessions of this class. Or I'll, I'll maybe tomorrow I'll upload the recorded sessions of this class. So every day we are giving the recorded, recorded sessions so that you know uh, students are struggling uh, to do labs. So for them to do the labs easily, they can watch the recordings and do the labs. And that is why I'm giving the uh, recorded sessions every day. So if you really want to make use of this free course, right? If something comes for free, people will not know the worth of it. That is so true, right? And 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 I also want you guys to don't take this course for granted. Okay, so uh, it's going to be really useful course only. Uh, please practice it. Okay, and uh, recorded sessions are given. Uh, that is for free. You can enroll for the course. I can see you know uh, somewhere around one fifty plus students have enrolled for the uh, you know LMS. Okay, you can watch the uh, recordings in the NG app also, right? You guys have Network Geek app, right? 
in ng app also there is a section called um, uh, no free boot camp you can watch the recordings over there and also in the lms right a learning management system we have our own lms in that 150 plus students have registered so far uh, but we know we have 900 plus students in the uh, in the uh, group right? i have mentioned uh, in the group but i don't know how many of you uh, 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 registered 150 plus only uh, but not uh, everyone so please go and register for the lms because i cannot assure you that it will be always free okay so right now this is this lms for this uh, CCNA bootcamp recordings is free. Maybe soon I may uh, change the pricing from free to something premium. So please go register. Once you register now, you will get that access for free lifetime. Okay, so please make use of it. Okay, so as soon as the uh, class is over, if you, if you guys have not registered for the LMS, please go check the link in the group. I've shared over there, register for the course. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, how to access the NG labs and all, uh, Steve, I have given that in the um, video itself. Go and check the LMS, so you will find out everything over there. Yeah, so, yes. Yes, guys. Um, yeah, so any doubts, you can personally ping me uh, in WhatsApp, right, regarding any 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 doubts regarding the LMS or accessing the uh, videos, you can... Uh, uh, or oh, reach me out and ng labs also we are giving it for free which is for 50 hours okay by default and you can maximum extend it to 50 and 50 so maximum 150 hours you can uh, request 50 hours we give by default if you need you can uh, increase uh, in two terms you can you can increase it as 50 plus 50 so totally you get 150 hours of lab for free to practice this uh you know season a free boot camp 150 hours should be sufficient more than sufficient yeah, so yes, so we did the same lab on NG Labs on that day. That is where I completed that session. And after that, un unfortunately, we couldn't have session for uh, uh, one week of time. So again, I'm back today. So we're going to discuss about uh, static routing only today also, but you know, uh, just a different lab. Okay, yes. <laughs> Okay, so let me take uh, the browser. Log into labs.networking.in. Uh, sign, sign in with my admin account. And how do you get your admin? How do you get your lab access? Everything, the videos are already, uh, you know, uh, given, right? The instructions are already given. Please go and check the video. Okay, so once you log in, you'll be able to see uh, free ng labs, right? Uh, free, in free ng labs, CCNA bootcamp. You have the static routing tool of this. Uh, just give me a minute please i'm just going to pause the screen sharing right now and i'll add one more lab into the free lab and i'll uh, resume the recording also yeah so once you uh, log in into the uh, labs you can find the season free ng labs and it's free for everyone and you can see the uh, folder uh, ccna boot camp there on that day we covered static routing to router scale see if you have not done it please go and do the lab because doing without doing the lab, if you're coming to the next class, then it's going to be very difficult for you. So yes, uh, so last class, this we did this first lab. So today we're gonna do this again one. I uh, will just open this, right? And you can see uh, a topology where uh, three routers are there, right? And let me start all the nodes. You can just right click and start all the nodes. Okay, sometimes uh, the nodes may not start properly. Uh, wait, we'll see. Yeah, so uh, here, this is a very good example. Here I started all the nodes, right? Sometimes what happens is, right? Even when you start the nodes specifically, right click and if you start them, they'll not start. I've seen this a lot of times, students even complain, there are certain labs for no reason, the routers don't start the first time. So what you can do is in that case, if you see this triangle symbol over there, right? Which means the router not started. In that case, right click, uh, wait, right click, wait. Right click and then wipe. You can just specific, you can specifically wipe that lab alone. Okay. Wipe that lab. I mean, wipe that node alone, not the lab actually. Wipe that node alone. Okay. And, uh, and listen, guys, whenever you run the lab, uh, the, the, the hours are actually running. You can see I have 33,000 hours, but you guys have only 50 hours of lab. So please make sure that you use the lab wisely. Right. So maximum you will get 150 hours of lab. So if you start a device and if you just keep running it, your lab hours will get decreased. Okay. So whenever you start the lab, just you just stop the lab once the lab is done. Okay, so let me right click and then start the play again. Uh, so I he didn't start initially, so I'm just starting again. Let me see. Okay, now he started. Can you see that uh, he started glowing? 
here also the same thing if the router didn't start then simple trick is right click wipe him and then uh, after wiping that node alone you can uh, start him again okay now let me try to start him again okay wait there's some issue with my mouse i think okay yes <clears throat> now i i can i started all the devices all the devices are running right now Okay, now I'll explain this lab uh, and then we can do static routing on this and then let's go. So please do the labs. Don't join the classes without doing the labs. There is no use. You will definitely hate the subject if you are directly joining the classes without doing the labs. Okay, yes. yes. <clears throat> so now we have this uh, lab here. And uh, one one advantage in this is the first lab that we were doing in ng labs, static routing uh, two routers. Static routing two routers. If you guys remember that, uh, we configured everything, right? We configured IP addresses, we configured subnet mask, we configured everything, right? I, I was configuring everything on the, uh, you know, starting routing two routers lab. Yeah, that was the first lab. Uh, that was the first inter introduction to ng lab. So I asked you guys to, uh, you know, I, I was doing, right? That lab was completely empty, right? We took, we configured everything on the uh, routers, right? The router interface IP, PC IP, is everything we did. But here, uh, since we already uh, know how to assign IP addresses to the PCs and routers and all, this lab is already, understand, already it is configured with, don't do it guys, again I'm saying you already, it is configured with IP addresses. Okay, all the interfaces of the router, okay, between this interface, this interface, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, everyone is configured IP addresses, even the PCs, they are configured with IP addresses. If you just open this PC, they'll have an IP address, everything is ready. Even they have the gateway also configured. So what I'm trying to do is this lab is pre-configured. So what is pre con what and all pre-configuration done? So this lab is pre-configured, understand? So don't do it again from the scratch. Don't configure IP addresses by yourself. It's pre-configured. What is pre-configured? The IP addressing. IP for interface of the router configured. IP for PCs configured. Right? But did I configure static routing? No. Static routing is not configured, guys, because that is what we are trying to do in this lab. Static routing is not configured, which we have to do. But apart from static routing, IP address to the router interface, IP address to the PC, gateway to the PC, everything is configured. Okay, let's go and uh, try to understand this lab first. Okay, now I want you guys to uh, let me know in the chat, please, uh, everyone participate. Right. So what are the networks that is directly connected to this router? Right. If you take the first router, what networks are directly connected to him? You can see 1.1 over here. You can see 4.0 over here. What networks are directly connected to the first router? Yes, please, please. Okay. See, I'm, I'm asking the network. Right, I can see if you guys are answering 1.1, 1.2 and all. I'm asking about the network space. What networks are directly connected? Networks means you should not say 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 and all. Okay. So this guy is 1.2, this guy is 1.3. But how you call them generically? Okay, they are called as what? They are called as 1.0 network, right? Yeah, very good. So directly on networks 1.0 and then 4.0. Those, those networks are directly connected to the first router. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes, very good. So now what networks are directly connected to the second router? Because he has got three interfaces now here, here, here. What networks are directly connected to the <coughs> third router? Sorry, I mean second router, second router. What networks are directly connected? Yeah, so you can see 4.0 is directly connected. So 4.0 and then maybe we'll start this way. Now we'll start with the, the numerical order 2.0. 4.0 and then 5.0. These networks are directly connected to the second router. What networks are directly connected to the third router? Yeah, so 3.0 and then 5.0. Correct? Okay, very good. So 3.0, 5.0. So whatever I have wrote, I have, whatever I have wrote in red color, they, those networks are directly connected networks. So they are directly connected. So now let us understand what networks are not in the routing table of the router. So totally, we have how many networks? In this topology, if you see 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, and then 5.0, five networks are there. So with five networks, we will write the network that is already in, in this network. One point totally in this network, we have five networks: 3.0, 4.0, and then and then 5.0. Okay, what networks are not available in the first router's routing table? What networks? So one is already available, four is already available. What is not available? Two, three, and then five is not available. Right? Okay, let us write that. Let me write the network that uh, he is not having 2.0, 3.0, and then 
four points, sorry, two point zero, three point zero, and then five point zero. Clear. So now, uh, what networks this guy doesn't have? Now let's write the network that he is unknown. He doesn't have what network he doesn't have. He doesn't have what? He doesn't have one point zero, and then and then five point zero. Okay, he doesn't have one point zero. Sorry, ah, one point zero and three point zero. Sorry, he doesn't have one point zero, and then he doesn't have three point zero. So these are the two networks that he don't have. Okay, what about the last total? He doesn't have one point zero, two point zero, and then four point zero. Okay, yeah. So while you do static routing, uh, you know, if you take a paper like this, and you know, if you write all these things, it will be very easy for you guys to understand. Okay, yeah. So I wrote in the networks that uh, are not directly connected. Okay, let me erase this and write it properly. Okay, so networks that is not directly connected to the second router is one point zero and then three point zero. Okay, yeah. So now the red color one or BC, they are directly connected. The black color one, we have to do static routing for them. Okay. Yeah. So now, same. Uh, what is the uh, next hop IP address? Case okay, to reach two point zero. What is the next hop IP address? So I need to jump, no? I need to jump from here to here. So 4.2 will be the next hop IP address. 4.2. Okay, 4.2 will be the next hop IP. So 2.0 network can be reached via 4.2. Okay. So now uh, 2.0 is here. You can see this network is here. Okay. Now can you guys guess uh, 3.0 is here. In the topology, 3.0 is here. Now we are trying to do static routing on the first router. Okay. Now say for 3.0, what is the next hop IP? Do you think 4.0 will be the next hop IP address? Or do you think 5.0 will be the next hop IP address? What do you guys think? Please answer in the chat. Or maybe I can even set up, I can set up all for you guys uh, if you feel it's difficult to answer in the chat. Okay. Okay, I'm just creating a poll. You can answer it over there. Yes, so I'm just launching the poll now. And the question is asked from the first office point of view. Next to hop IP for 3.0 slash 24. Yeah, please everyone participate in the poll, please. Okay, so the poll will run for 40 seconds. So we have 10 more seconds, please everyone answer. Okay, so yes, I'll end the poll now. So I'm just sharing the results also. Okay, it's 71, 29 days. Yeah, so 70%, um, are thinking that this is this is seventy percent, right? Seventy percent they uh, opted for uh, four point two, and the thirty percent they opted for five point two. Okay, so seventy thirty. I'll tell you the answer. Okay, first of all, you have to understand one thing. From router one, do we have any contact to router three? Can router one send a packet directly to router three? The answer is no, right? Router one cannot send any packet to router three. So which means what is the adjacent router? Adjacent means what is the next router for router one? Router one can send only to router two. So in that case, right, even though 3.0 is connected to router three, even though 3.0 is connected to router three, for first router, he can send only to <clears throat> 4.0. So the answer is what the answer is the majority is what the majority is correct. 3.0 can be reached via 4.2 only. Right. First, you have to give to this guy, and this guy will give it to this guy, right? So, which means from router's point of view, router have to give to router two only. Router one can give to router two only. So, the answer is to reach three points, the next hop IP address is four point. Okay, next one to reach five points, what is the next hop IP guys? Okay, so I'm just gonna ask the uh, I can I edit the question. Maybe I cannot edit the question anyway. Uh, yes. You just answer. Right? I don't want to create the poll again. What is the answer for this? What is the for 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 uh, three point five point zero? What is the next hop IP address? Is it going to be um 
5.0 or 0 will be 4.0. It's very clear now you guys understood that the next hop IP will be only the next router, right? Next hop IP will be only the next router. Okay, in that case, yeah, so in that case, it's going to be uh, 4.2. Good, good, good. Yes, yeah, so this is the routing. This is what the static routing we're going to create. Uh, yes, yes, for static routing, right? Static routing we're going to create. Okay, these entries are C. They are directly connected. Okay, again, uh, what is next hop IP? We'll just finish it quick. So what is the next hop IP for 1.0? 1.0, you have 1.0 over here, no? So from router 2 point, from router 2, 1.0 can reach via 4.1. And then 3.0 can reach via 3.3 can be reached via 5.2. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, very good, guys. So now finally we are into the last router. What is the next hop IP address for this guy? All guys, all, all networks can reach via 5.1 only. That is an extra hop IP address for this guy. Okay, very good. So yes, so let me start and do this lab real quick, guys. Again, I'm saying you. I'm doing this lab just because you guys, when you watch the recordings, you can also practice the lab. That is the reason. So please uh, practice it. Okay. So let me click on router one. So how to access entry labs, all those things, the materials are already given. You guys have to check the recordings. Okay. And first thing I would like to change the host name. That is uh, good for me to know which router I'm configuring. I'm typing command host name. I right? hope you guys remember E and config those things and all. Okay. Now, um, Interface g0 slash sorry no need to configure IP addresses to the interface because if you see uh, the command do show IP interface free this is the actual command do show IP interface free uh, this is a command to see the uh, interface IP address of the router and you can see you know already what is configured I started the router and when I checked uh, they have the IP address this is what I told you they are pre configured with IP addresses okay. So do show IP interface brief. You can use this command do show IP interface brief or else the shortcut for that is do show IP IMP BRI. Okay, so that also you can use. Okay, same, same, just shortcut command. Okay. Yes, so let me just go and check do show IP route static if I have any static routing uh, available in the router. So if you give do show IP route case, if you give do show IP route, it's going to show you the complete routing table. If I give do show IP route static, it's going to filter and show me only the static route. And you can see there is no routing, right? There is no routing. You can see, you know, there is no routing because there is no static routing in router 1. Okay, let me configure it. Okay. So here uh, we are into the uh, router 1. Uh, IP route 192.168.2.0.255.255.255.0.192.168.4.2. Okay. So here, yes, this is what we are doing. So we are saying the 2.0 slash 24 network can be reached via 4.0. Okay, then now let me just use up arrow key. I'm using up arrow, right? I'm using this arrow key, you know, you have up arrow key, right? You can use that up arrow key to get the previous command. And I'm just changing this, uh, I'm just moving my arrow key. Uh, 3.0 can reach via 4.2. Okay, yeah, so we have done this also. First, I configured this static routing. Done. Now, this is also done. Now, we are trying to configure this. The same way, uh, 5.3 can be can reached via 4.2. Done, guys. So, we configured all static routing. Okay, now let me check. What is the command? Do show, sorry, do show IP route. You can give do show IP route also, or you can give do show IP route static to see only the static routes. Yeah, now you can see all these entries are appearing. Okay, very good. Okay, now uh, this is also done. Okay, this is also done. Now let's go and configure the second router. We're going to configure this static route. Hope you guys are following. So first thing first, configure the host name so that you don't uh, get yourself confused. So host name, R2. So now we know that I'm in R2. Okay, so do show IP interface brief. You can see IPs are already configured by me. You don't have to do it. So you can directly go and configure static routing. IP route 192.168 and what network we are trying to add is we are trying to add 1.0, right? 1.0 can reach via 4.0. 1.0, 255.255.255.0 can reach via 4.1. Okay. So IP route 2.0. Sorry, not 2.0, 2.0 is the same already. What is the next network it doesn't have? 
3.0. So 3.0 can reach to IRC. Please make sure that you change this field also, right? You should not give it directly. You should change this. It is not in 4.1. What is the next hop IP for it? 5.2. Okay, 5.2. Okay. Yes. So now let's give uh, do show IP route static. And you can see there are there are two static routing that has been added in the first order routing table. Okay. Now let's understand uh, this. Okay. So let's go. So we have done this. We have done this also. Now we are just trying to do it on the third router because we are finishing. Okay. So we'll go to the router three. First thing first, en country host name R3. Uh, uh, we'll check the interface IP address with the command do IP interface three. Yes, IPs are already configured. Good. Uh, IP route 191. Sorry, IP route give a space after that. 192.168. We have to configure 1.0 and then 2.0 and then 4.0. Okay, let me real quickly do it. So 1.0, That is the next one. Right? Can you see that can be to a 5 point this time. 5.1, he's the next to hop IP address, 5.1. And then next we're gonna have uh, 2.0 via 5.1, and then we're gonna have 2.0 via 5.1. So finally, when I give do show IP route static, you guys gonna see all the static routes that have been added into the routing table of the uh, third router. Okay, yeah, very good. So now, um, see guys, I can do it very easily, but what is very important, this diagram, Right. Since I was able to have this diagram uh, with me, I'm able to do static routing easily. The same way, right? What you guys do is when you take the lab, right? Draw this diagram in a paper, right? Write all the IP addresses, and then whatever I've done here, whatever this documentation work, the documentation work is very important in static routing. So write this documentation work, go to the router one by one, and then configure. Okay. Any doubts? You can check the recordings also. Okay. Now all we need to do is just need to check the ping is working or not. So I'm gonna take this PC. And I'm gonna ping uh, to this guy, and I'm gonna ping to this guy. So last time we were pinging, uh, but that was from Windows XP mission. Now we are trying to ping from a Linux mission. I click on this guy, and now when I give a couple of times enter, I can see ping the one into one sixty eight. IPs are already configured with them also. Right? One point, sorry, two point. We'll try to ping two point two. See, it's working. Ping is working, and I don't know whether I told this in the last class or not. So usually when you make a ping uh, with Windows machine, right? when you make a ping from a win any Windows machine, if you make a ping, a uh, Windows uh, PC, uh, they'll send only four things, right? So request, reply, request, reply, request, reply, request, reply. So it happens like this. But when you do it from a Linux machine, Linux machine, uh, they're gonna send it unlimited. Yeah, there is no stock. If you just go for a break and come back, you could see this guy would have sent some thousand plus the ping request by that time. Okay, so you see it's keep on going, right? There's no stop for Linux machines. Uh, by default, you have to give, once you start the ping, you have to give control plus C. Okay, you have to hold your control key and then control C, right? I'll just see control C and then it, uh, you know, I just broke the ping uh, and you can see 49 packets have been transferred, 49 packets received, so 0% packet loss. Okay, so let me try to ping uh, this guy ping uh, 3.2 just to verify that he is also reachable or not. Yes, so 3.2 is also reachable. Okay, I gave control C to stop it. Okay, so now just understand the process stage. This is important. Okay, let me undo all these things. Okay, so now when I try to ping 3.2, how the packet flow was. When I try to ping, uh, 1.2 is trying to reach. 1.2 is trying to reach 3.2. There is a thing request, right? I was trying to ping from this guy this time. How the packet flow is, that is what we are trying to understand now. So here we send this ping request from this PC to the router. Right? First, it goes to the gateway, right? And what gateway will do? Gateway will check this routing table. So what is the destination, guys? Right? It's simply you now just think you are a router. What do you do? When a packet comes to you, you ask the destination, right? And then you check your routing table. Where it is matching? It is matching on this line. Now, what is the next to hop IP the routing table has got? 4.0. Now, when the packet comes to the router and asking, right, just imagine like this. A packet comes to the router and asking, hey, router, can you say how to reach 3.2? That is what the packet goes to the router and says, hey, router, I want to reach 3.2. Can you tell me how to reach? And now the router says, 
uh, share packet, you can reach 3.2 by going to 4.2. So now the router, what the router does is, the router will forward the packet after getting it forward the packet to the second router, right? So this is what, now the router says, hey, go in this direction. That's what the router says. Okay, so now 1.2, still the packet is traveling in the same source IP, which it was having initially. The same packet, right? The same source and destination, everything is same. Now this packet left router one and now it's reaching router two. Okay. Now uh, going to router two, the packet is asking, hey, router two, can you say where to reach 3.0? Can you say where is 3.0? I just want to reach him. Now router two says, of course, yes, packet. Let me check my routing table. In my routing table, you have a match over here. And what is next to IP app for? 5.0. So now what router two will do? Router two will say, hey, packet, if you want to reach 3.0, go and reach 5.0 first. So I'm just forwarding you on this direction. So the packet leaves router 2, right, and reaches home, reaches router 3. Okay, the same packet left router 2 and reaching router 3. Now it goes to the router 3. Router 3 sees it and asking again, same question now. Same question. Hey, router uh, 3, can you say where to reach 3.2? Uh, and router 3 checks the routing table and he sees that 3.2, that is 3.0 slash network is connected to me directly. It is a directly connected network. Right? So, I'm just going to get you and forward out of this 0 slash 0 interface so that you reach 3.2. Okay, you got the idea? So now uh, this is how the packet leaves this. Uh, I mean, this is how the packet reaches the 3.0 destination. Now the reply, I don't have to specifically spend time on explaining it. You guys know it already. 1.2 to the destination of 3.2. Okay, this will be, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. It should be, uh, what will be the source in the reply? It's going to be 3.2 uh, will be the source and the destination will be one point, right? Okay. So this reply packet will be leaving here, leaving here, leaving here, and then going away. Yeah, you got the idea? This is a packet flow, guys. Okay, these are the packet travels. Yeah. See, networking is an interesting subject, but I, I want you guys to dedicate some time. Right? And and uh, so I have a rich experience in teaching networking. Right? I'm not uh, confusing you guys. I know how to teach all those things and all. Uh, still, if you guys are not getting what I'm trying to say, uh, two things. One is you might not have seen the previous classes. You directly joined this class. So that is why you're not getting, that is why you're not understanding. Even you missed to watch the recordings also. The second thing is maybe you are attending the classes regularly, but still I'm not able to understand in the sense, maybe you just need more time. You wanted to watch the recording one more time. Maybe first time, if you couldn't understand what I'm uh, trying to say, go watch the recording one more time. Or if second time also, if you couldn't understand, spend one more time, spend one more time to watch the recording. See, it depends on, you know, um, uh, you know, student to student. Uh, some people, they get in the first attempt. Some people, they need three or four times to watch the, the recordings. Okay, I'm leaving it to you, right? I don't know how intelligent uh, students are, right? You you are kind of mixed. Uh, if you're understanding the first attempt, very good, well and good. If you're not understanding, then watch the recording. And always I'm saying you, if you are, if you are ignoring my message, doing the labs, then you're not going to uh, love this subject. That's for sure. Yeah, so you may understand things now, but if you're not doing today's lab and coming for the next day's class, then you will not understand. You will partially understand next day. The other day, again, you will understand only 25% of it. The next day, you will understand only 5% of it. At some point of time, you know, you will understand 0% of the class. So that is where you drop from the course. Okay. So don't do that. Even people who are watching the recordings also, I'm telling you, dedicate some time and watch recordings regularly, right? Maybe the maximum break you can, you can have between uh, the recordings can be one day. Hey, maybe if yesterday you watched it, today you're taking a break, maybe next day, please watch it. Right? If you're giving a long break, again, you'll not understand anything. Okay. So yes, so we'll start uh, with the next. Okay. So you guys can practice the lab. Recordings will be definitely uploaded into the portal. Uh, you can watch the recordings and do it. Okay, so let me write this lab. Okay, so please work with the lab quiz properly uh, because I know if you, so I'll just tell you one thing now. Uh, right now, if you see this lab, how many devices we have got in this lab? Here we have six pieces, right? Six pieces you have got, and then you have got, uh, you know, three routers. So totally how many devices we have in this lab? We have nine devices, okay, nine devices. So basically, it's, we call them, you can call this nine devices, or I call this nine instances. Nine instances, because all these things are virtual machines. We call them as instances. So which means if you're running this lab for one minute, let's say, if you're running this lab for one minute, then, it will consume nine minutes from your lab. You got the point. It's not that it's not about login time or logout time, guys. If you log into the lab now, 
and once you log out it's not going to uh, no it's not it's not going to stop uh, this thing so even if you log into the lab as long as you log in there is no issues at all the moment when you start the device that is where the count starts okay now you can see 33000 hours i have got up but the moment i start this lab right and if one one if one minute i'm running all these nine devices then it's going to count me nine minutes okay hope you understood what i'm trying to say so it's going to count nine minutes so if you're running this lab for one hour then it's going to consume nine hours from the remaining lab hours so that way please please make sure that you uh, use the lab wisely okay don't just take that uh, use the lab assume that you just uh, you know start all the devices and you forgot to stop them you forgot to wipe them either you can stop or you can wipe both are fine only okay wipe is always recommended better uh, try to wipe so if you wipe it then the, the timing will not run okay so please have a note of it okay don't waste the lab unnecessarily okay let me close the lab and then go to the next one uh, which is we're going to do this lab uh, but not uh, now first let us understand uh, one more thing called mac address Okay, so yeah, next up, um, we'll have the class for next 30 to 40 minutes space. Uh, but uh, it's going to be a little theoretical only, not boring definitely. It will be interesting, but a little bit of theory. Okay, yes, <clears throat> let's try to understand uh, this way. Okay, so now uh, every uh, NIC we have, right? Where and all you can find NICs. NICs you can find in all, all places, like PC has got NIC, right? A router has got NIC. Switches they have got NICs. Right? Maybe you can talk about wired NICs. So wired network interface card. There are even wireless NICs. Wireless NICs. Okay, I'll show you how wireless NIC looks like. So wireless NICs, which devices they have? Maybe laptops. You guys are connecting laptop to the Wi-Fi, right? Laptop will have wireless NICs. Mobile phones will have wireless NICs. Okay, so if you take PC in the sense, I mean by desktop. If it is a desktop, then you're going to have a wired NIC. If the same PC is laptop, then you're going to have wireless, right? And I can say uh, even laptops also, right? Most of the laptop models also have wired NIC. Okay, even the laptop also have. So which means when you take laptop, right? You take laptop, laptop have both NICs, right? So you can also have wireless NIC to connect to wireless networks. Or also, if you don't have wireless network at some point in some places, the laptop will also have a wired NIC, which is what we call as a LAN port, right? Wired NIC. You can even check right now if you're joining the class from your laptop, just go see nearby, side by, you will have a small network interface card in your laptop. Okay. Yes. So wireless NIC, wired NIC. Laptop has got both, but if you take uh, mobiles and all, right? If you take mobile phones, right? There is no wired NIC. Mobile phones purely they have got what? They have got only wireless network interface card. A network interface card that is capable of connecting to wireless networks, we call them as wireless NIC. Right? And then um, a network interface card that where you can connect a cable, that is basically we call it wired NIC. And this whole CCNA course will be covering about a LAN port, which is uh, we call it as a LAN port or you can call it as a wired NIC. Right? So all the examples I'm giving here, uh, it's going to be based on wired NIC. I mean, we are not discussing anything wireless here. But anyway, the technology is exactly the same. Just uh, into instead of sending the uh, signals in the wire, you send the signals in the air. Yeah, that is what wireless is. Apart from that, there is no difference in uh, way of communication. Yeah. So yes, now let's try to understand uh, uh, how the wireless NIC and wired NIC. I think wire wireless uh, wired I have shown I think, but let me go and uh, show you both one more time. So when I search for wired network interface card, or you can even call it as uh, LAN port, whatever it is. I just go with the uh, images. And these are wired network interface, right? So the, they are basically available inside your PC and you see only this port, right? this LAN port you see, where you connect a cable into it. Okay, so this is wired NIC, we all know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you can see this diagram, right? The types of NICs, wireless, wired, USB, uh, external link and all. See, they are not basically, uh, these are the only two ways. This. Wired and wireless is what, uh, two types, okay? Uh, external NIC is external, but even they can one they can they can be wired or wireless only. Okay, just ignore this point. Don't see this diagram. They are they are made confusing. Okay, so now I'll search for wireless NIC. Wireless NIC. Okay. 
and you can see, you know, uh, I'll give you this. This is exactly what uh, what I was looking for. Okay, let me open this in a new tab, open image in a new tab. And this is the uh, wireless and IC, uh, which is a small chip, right? If you see the size of the wireless and IC, it will be less than an inch. Okay, that's a very so small, half an inch size it will be, but it is connected inside your laptop or inside your phone. That is why you're able to see the Wi-Fi signals. If you're right now, if you're connected to the Wi-Fi network, uh, through phone or through uh, a laptop, then there is some some a component like this which is inside your device, phone or laptop, which is helping us to connect to the wireless network. So got the idea? Yes. So we have two NICs, the two types of NICs, wired and wireless, right? So two communications through wire, this guy will uh, send a signal. Uh, through air, this guy will send a signal. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's understand what is MAC address right now. So MAC address, MAC. See, I'm not going to deep dive into MAC address and all. Again, this course is a short course, right? a basic course only. We have many things to discuss. Uh, I cannot discuss everything in, in depth here. Media access control. Okay, I'll simply say you uh, what is MAC stands for media access control. Right? And every PC, every NIC has got an ID for it. Every NIC will have a unique ID. Okay, every network interface card, I say every network interface card will have a unique ID. Right, how we have a IEMI number, IEMI number for phones. Right, every phone has got an IEMI number, right? So, uh, the same way, uh, every um, network interface card has got a unique ID, which is basically called as MAC address. Okay, which is basically called as a MAC address. Okay, <clears throat> now, okay, so IEMEA. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether I, I spelled it correctly or wrong. Uh, IEMEA, yeah, okay. So it's IMEA, fine. IMEA, IEMI, whatever it is. You, you understood what I'm what I'm trying to say. IMEA, okay. Yes. So uh, NIC is nothing but a unique ID that is given to the MAC interface. I mean, sorry, N N I uh, MAC address is a unique ID that is given to the network interface card. So every NIC will have a unique ID. That is what MAC address is. Right now, let's understand the format of the MAC address. See, IP address, we know the format of IP is what? X dot, X dot, X dot, X. Okay, this is the format of an IP address. And what is the range of an X? X can vary from 0 to 255. So we all know that uh, the IP address starts from 0 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 from there till 255.255.255.255. Good. So this is the uh, range of uh, the IP address. But MAC address. OK, so MAC address, uh, this is a different format, basically. Um, yeah, so MAC address will be basically from 0 to F. It's an hexadecimal address, it's 0 to F. Right? And uh, basically, um, the range, I'll write the range of MAC address. So it's 0, 0. The extension, the format is you have an iPhone after every uh, two characters. From there to FF, the FF. It's a 12 character hexadecimal address, right? And uh, your NIC will have an ID, right? And that ID will be inside this particular range number. Okay. So if I if you want to see the MAC address of your network interface card, what I can do is I'll just go to command form IP config slash all. I'm just doing uh just to see what is the you know when you give IP config guys, you will see only the IP address mask and gateway. When you give IP config slash all, uh, you will give all you will see all the information. So basically, here you can see this is what uh, let me copy this. Okay, so this is what the output I got. I selected this one because this is wireless, uh, which means this is a Wi Fi adapter or Wi Fi NIC app. But in that one, Wi Fi NIC, can you see there is something called physical address? Thing? This physical address is what. <clears throat> We call this MAC address. Okay, so it's basically the physical. Uh, you no, know, yes, you can also get. See, there are multiple ways to get the MAC address. Uh, I don't want to get into all the ways of getting the MAC address and all. I'll tell you one common command, which is IP config slash all, in which you see the physical address, and then uh, this is what the MAC address. Right? So MAC address, they have got another name. Right? That's what physical address is. Okay, so why it is called as a physical address? There is a question in the chat. Why it is called as a physical address? See, basically, uh, why it is called as a physical address means you cannot basically change it. The MAC address of the NIC stays, right? so it cannot be changed. But that, is what, that is why we call it as a, a physical address. 
Whereas IPL is not physical, you can change the IP if you want, but you cannot change the MAC address. So let me take my MAC address as an example. Okay? F079. I'm just going to really quickly want to finish this MAC address concept and get into the next topic. Uh, 25.9f.f0. Okay, so this is my MAC address. So everyone will have uh, a MAC address like this. You guys can also check it, right? Uh, this is a command you can use IP config slash all. Right? Just use this command. IP config slash all. Right. If you open the command prompt of the PC, and you IP config slash all, you will be able to see the physical address that is what your uh, a MAC address is. Okay. So now um, it's a unique ID, right? First, let's understand uh, briefly. Let us understand the difference between IP and MAC. Okay? Some few properties I'm gonna give you about IP and MAC. Both are address only. Both are used for communication only. But uh, what is the difference? Okay. See, IP is something that we assign. We means humans we assign, right? We just go and assign IP address to the PC. So IP address is something that we assign. Who's assigning MAC address? So who assigned this MAC address to the uh, to, to my uh, PC? The NIC manufacturer. Who manufactures my NIC? NIC's manufacturer will assign. NIC manufacturer. So we assign, whereas this is an, an NIC manufacturer assigns it. Okay, that guy will assign it. Okay, next term. Uh, since we assign, we can change it. We can change. Okay, so if you don't want this IP, if you want a different IP, you can go and change it, right? But MAC address are permanent. They cannot be changed. They are permanent, right? So this is, this we can change, not permanent, but this is permanent, right? I'm just giving you the properties between IP and MAC. And then uh, they are um, not unique, which means I can have, uh, they are not unique. Say I can have an IP address like this. I can go to, uh, I mean, uh, I have an IP address at my, in my PC, like 192.168.1.2. The same IP you can also have at your home for your PC. So the, the, the IP that I have at my home in my PC, you can also have the same IP address at your home in your PC, right? So IP addresses are not unique, okay? Uh, but MAC addresses are unique. So that is something that you have to understand. So they are unique. <clears throat> okay. So um, this guy is not unique. This guy is uh, unique. So these are the properties that we are trying to understand, right? We assign NIC manufacturer assigns it. Okay, we cannot we can change it because we assign it here. We cannot change it because it is assigned by the NIC manufacturer. So it's permanent. Okay, this is not unique uh, because many devices, many people right around the world can have uh, the, the, the IP address for them. So it's a duplicated one. You can have duplicated IP address also, but MAC address is unique. Right? So what do I what I'm trying to say is <clears throat> no one in the world will have this IP, this MAC address. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to say. This is my MAC address, right? So no one in the world will have this MAC address for their NIC. But many guys in the world can have this as their IP address, right? So which means the IP that I have, you guys can see you know, 172 1.133. This IP, many devices can have. I don't know who's having it, but many devices can have. But this MAC address is unique, okay? So with this, um, we'll try to understand one more thing. So the MAC address has got two portions. So let me uh, write this again, F079. To the zero two five nine f f zero yeah yeah so MAC address has got uh, twelve characters in that right this is basically six characters we call as OUA organization unique identifier so by seeing the first six characters uh, we can understand which uh, manufacturer it is and now uh, with the other six characters basically like vendor ID see it's very easy to understand this basically right uh, the the method of this is Right. See, I have a, a mobile number like this. Assume that my mobile number starts with 9677. All of you guys know it. That is my WhatsApp number. Uh, 9671693043. Right there. Okay. So in which, um, you know, by seeing this, I, 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 I still believe that most of you guys have this uh, experience uh, before this mobile number portability came into India. Right. My mobile number starts with this. Right. And then by seeing the first four characters also itself, right, uh, we can understand whether which provider it is. Maybe it is Airtel or Geo or Geo, whatever brand it is, you guys can understand, right? Okay, I, I can give you a very simple example which you guys can really catch. So the mobile number starts nine nine triple four. Then uh, who's going to be the vendor? Who's going to be the provider? BSNL, right? See, I'm talking in terms of uh, Chennai, guys. So Chennai or Tamil Nadu, we have it like this. 
okay so maybe out of tamil nadu out of chennai you might have a different uh, uh, series but the example is same just by seeing the initial few characters of a mobile number we can say which uh, uh, which you know provider it is it is atl or bsnl or uh, a jio or whoever it is right so now 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 how do you understand the same thing the same way the first six characters says the company who is the manufacturer name of the manufacturer name of the manufacturer right and then here this is basically uh, the remaining characters that the manufacturer gives to us for example like you know 9677 belongs to atel uh, this is the prefix portion and then uh, he gave me this 169304 so this he he got it from the government this prefix this 9677 he got it from the government and after getting this prefix uh, he gave me uh, the remaining six characters right this is this is the company's choice okay this is something that he got it from the uh, government right same way a uh, similar example only here here we have this guy and here we have this guy this is from the manufacturer I mean name of the manufacturer and this is basically the vendor id <clears throat> yes now um, see uh, from where basically uh, for example you take a company called dell guys okay so dell is manufacturing an ic okay so when you want when you want to manufacture an ic you want to give an id to him what is an id the id is something but mac address so uh, what they will do is they will go and contact uh, a person called i triple e so most of you might know this guy i triple e so they will go and contact i triple e there is a sub organizations uh, under i triple e that organization will give the uh, first six characters for example assume that uh, you know uh, f07960 uh, uh, that is uh, given by basically it is a purchase process they'll have to pay some money to i triple e and get the uh, prefix for f07960 okay once uh, you get this uh, prefix once you get this prefix now what they can do is they'll call this for them right now they can uh, configure uh, they can assign any any nic they manufacture they can assign uh, in this order like the first one will have all zero and uh, next one will have continuous it has got and you will have ff 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 okay. so this is a uh, way. so any company who will purchase the prefix part and then they'll get the uh company they will will buy the prefix part which you call as organization unique identifier and the remaining six characters they give uh to the nic they manufacture right so this number will not change any nic they manufacture it will start with this but the last six characters dynamically it will keep changing one by one by one for every nic <laughs> yeah so yes um now uh, what i'll do is there is a website uh, to identify who is your nic manufacturer so i'll just go to google again I'll go to Google and search for a Mac vendor. Okay, I'm searching for Mac vendor, and there you got you. You'll have many many websites to get this information. Right? I search for Mac vendor. I would like to copy my Mac address and put it over there. And it says that uh, by by seeing the first six characters, the website uh, told me that uh, Apple is what your yeah, NICS manufacturer, right? right? And maybe you guys uh, might not aware about it. I'm using. Uh, Apple laptop over here, Apple MacBook, and I'm I have installed a uh, uh, Windows in it. So during the class, I was in all I'll be using Windows. If you guys uh, have a doubt, right, how do you use Windows in a uh, uh, MacBook? Then I, I've just installed it in a dual boot option. So whenever I teach classes, I'll go to Mac, I'll go to Windows. I'll go to Windows uh, in this MacBook. So whenever I personally use, I go for uh, Mac OS. Okay, yeah. So that is why you guys are seeing Windows, but uh, the NIC uh, told us that it is nothing but Apple. Okay. So yes. So now I can even uh, clear the last six characters, but still the website will be able to see that it is Apple only. Okay. But when I remove the uh, sixth character, now only five characters are given, so it couldn't find what NIC what vendor it is. So six zero when I give it is Apple. That's what mine is. When I give six one, it says not found. Six two, not found. Okay. Yes. So now, uh, um, uh, Haman, the how my submit mask is that those things are uh, are not something that I can discuss right now. So please wait. If if possible, uh, during the submitting class, I I may explain that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So now, um, you guys are understanding. No, this is what the 
the MACA does the fixed path, the fixed path, everything is good. Now, uh, before I finish this, I just wanted to, before finishing MAC address, I just wanted to uh, say one more thing. Uh, there is a website called Ajit. Okay, so let's go to ajit.com. And then uh, this guy will give you, it's an analytics website. Many network engineers, not only network engineers, right? Many analytic, analytics, analytics people, they use this. There I'll just go and resources I'll go to, and then I'll go to MAC address vendor. Okay, just to see who is very uh, popular in this. Okay. So let me go to uh, top and our range by countries. I just wanted to see who has manufactured many NICs in the world. Which company has manufactured most of the NICs in the world? That's what I wanted to see. I think you guys are also uh, really excited to see this. Let me click on that link. And there you go. You can see the first one is Huawei Technologies, a Chinese company. 1497, the range countries. Okay. And Cisco Systems, again, uh, the one that you guys are learning, this guy has got 1186. Okay. See, I I'll tell you one thing, guys. Uh, I've been following Cisco for almost 10 plus years. Okay, 12 years I've been following Cisco. Uh, till 2018, till 2018, I always show this website to all my students. Uh, till 2018, Cisco was in the first place. Okay. And uh, maybe I, I can say last 30 years. Okay, maybe you can think like this from 1988 to 2018. Cisco was in the first place. He was dominating the field of uh, networking, right? Because what is NIC? It's a network interface card. Why do you need network interface card to join a network, correct? Okay. So, so to join a network, we need network interface card, and which is a big networking company. Of course, Cisco is a big networking company, right? Why do we need a uh, network interface for on, on Cisco? Or why do they need this switch counters? Um, it's because you have a 24 port switch. It's 24 port switch, but what is this? It is 24 NIC, correct? Okay, so like, you know, Cisco's major product is switches, routers, firewalls. These networking devices also need a network interface, card, correct? So the network interface in Cisco is very dominant in uh, you know, in the networking industry, networking products, uh, and that is why uh, they have got these many uh, counts. Okay, and 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 you can see what is this one four nine seven? This is nothing but the prefix that he purchased. The prefix, right? I'm talking about this guy. Right? This this portion, this right. So this is one like this. Uh, you know, this six characters. How many uh, prefixes they have purchased? Huawei has purchased 1497 and Cisco has purchased 1186. Yep. So recently, uh, Cisco uh, came to the second place and Huawei came to the first place. See, Huawei, they also do very, uh, uh, you know, a good networking uh, products. Right? But but when it, when it comes to reputation and quality, of course, Cisco is always uh, the better person. But the thing is, Cisco devices are really costly. Right? So if you take the price of a Cisco switch, they'll say somewhere around 3 lakh rupees. The same model, the same configuration, you can buy from Huawei for 50,000 rupees. Okay, something someone gives for 50,000, the same configuration, someone is uh, selling it for 3 lakh rupees. So, of course, if you are a, if you are running a business, uh, which uh, component you will go for? Of course, you will go for a one that is uh, lesser cost, right? Uh, that is the reason because you all know Chinese products are really cheap, right? They sell it uh, to a very low cost, but still Cisco is competing, right? Uh, and now, uh, I'm not saying that Cisco went down and all. Cisco is still challenging. Uh, many companies, they have a brand name, right? So they always wanted to go with Cisco only. Uh, see, if, if you ask me which is better, right? I do consulting also. I do consulting many networks. Uh, but what I would suggest is, if it's my own company, if you wanted to set up a network for my own company, I would go for Huawei. This guy. <laughs> Let's say. But if I do consulting for my clients, I would go to, I would go, uh, you know, because it's not my money, you know, so they're going to spend anyway. So I go for Cisco. So that's the thing, right? Pricing competition is very uh, heavy. And what Huawei is doing is, right, they give lifetime warranty. Okay, so this is the switch goes down and the switch burns. Just you throw it and tell us, we'll send it, we'll ship a new switch to you. So they give a lifetime warranty. But Cisco, they don't have that much in that, right? Cisco, they give a limited one-year warranty. Right. And then after that, you have to go for some AMC. 
uh, to get it running out. Uh, it's an expensive thing. Okay? It's not just one time you buy. If you go with Cisco, you have a recurring expense. But when you go with Huawei or some other plans, it's just one time and they have lifetime warranty. So they, they are, you know, they are in you know, a very, very, very huge competition to Cisco. Huawei is now doing. Okay, next, uh, uh, next to Cisco systems, you can see Apple. Right? Apple has got, Apple is also closely challenging Cisco, 1133. Okay, so there is no much difference between uh, Apple and uh, Cisco. So yes, because Apple, most of the Apple devices, uh, they use Apple NIC. Okay, and I just want to answer one thing before uh, finishing this MAC address concept. That is, see, if you have an HP laptop, right? it, uh, you can just go give IP config space slash all, and then you can find your MAC address. Okay, so you can find your MAC address. You can put that MAC address in the website, which I was showing you one time. Uh, you might have a different brand. See, your laptop can be from HP, but it doesn't mean that NIC should also be from HP. Okay, so laptop brand can be HP, but NIC can be from Intel. Okay, so in my case, in my case, the Apple is the laptop brand is Apple, right? The NIC also is also from Apple only. Okay, in my case, both are Apple. But in your case, or most of the cases, the brand will be HP, Lenovo, Dell, whatever it is, but the NIC can be from Intel or it can be from different vendors also. Understand? So uh, you have a laptop, uh, HP it is, don't believe that everything inside that laptop is going to be an HP product, not like that, right? Hard disk can be from a different vendor, NIC can be from a different vendor, so you have. So when you go and take your, um, a MAC address of that PC, which means when you go and take the MAC address of the NIC, you know that who is the manufacturer of that NIC. Right? Don't expect to have your laptop brand name over there. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Um, okay, I think already students started giving me in the chat, right? Uh, the laptop is MSI and the uh, NIC is Intel, right? Yeah. So Rajesh says that, uh, I don't know what his laptop name is, maybe Mega Will Limited. Yes, so, so yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, HP laptop, right. Okay, so now, uh, yeah, so it's almost eight, but uh, usually I'll finish my class by eight o'clock, but I just want to extend it because we have only nine sessions left. I have many concepts to complete. So I'm just gonna extend it and finish the, the next concept of ARP. Okay, so please follow me. Uh, we'll finish it in next uh, 20 minutes maximum. Okay. So ARP. It's very, very important concept. Okay. But again, you know, in, in my actual uh, CCNA classes, I used to spend ARP for, I can say, three hours of time. So ARP alone, I'll be discussing for three hours. We have ARP, same network, different network, uh, different routers. I spend three hours for ARP. Again, uh, things are not the same way here. I'm just going to discuss only for 20 minutes or maximum 30 minutes for ARP, okay? Yes, I'm just gonna discuss basics of ARP only here. ARP stands for, ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. This is very important guys, because whenever you go to networking interview and all, you can expect questions definitely from this ARP concept. Right, Address Resolution Protocol. At least, you know, you can, uh, by attending this 20 minutes of this ARP session, you can at least say what is what. Maybe even if you don't have a very deep understanding about uh, ARP, but still you can say what is ARP. Address the solution protocol. So what it is basically. Uh, let me take my uh, slide to explain that. Uh, don't leave the meeting, guys. I know, I know, once it is uh, uh, 8 plus, when it is more than 8 p.m., I know students will drop from the meeting. Okay, but this is going to be really important. Yeah. ARP, same input. We'll do this. Okay. So now we have a, a lab like this, right? So this is the NIC. You have an NIC of this PC that the NIC's IP is. This NIC's MAC is here. This is NIC IP of this PC, a MAC, and NIC IP in MAC. Okay. Yes. So um, I just wanted to. Um, I'm just going to erase this because uh, I'm not going to discuss these things and all. Okay, we'll basically understand what this uh, ARP is. Okay, so yes. So now um, when I uh, type ping, 
and then I'm trying to ping 192.168.1.3. Okay, so now this is nothing but here. Uh, what I have uh, written here is now this is the uh, payload, right? So this is payload. This is the inner content. And then uh, after payload, what do you have? You have layer. This is what this is. This is layer uh, seven, right? Layer seven to layer five. This is what we say, no? Generally, uh, layer seven to layer five. Uh, that's the payload part and then uh, this is a uh, layer four i didn't write it here uh, i'm just directly going with uh, layer three okay so usually we have what how the uh, concept is we discussed no ECM model group payload and then you have what you have layer four and then you have layer three and then you have layer two this is how the encapsulation process works so here i have layer seven to layer five and i don't have this is what the payload is right you just simply like write, write it like payload payload yeah so and then this is uh, payload and then this is the layer uh, four uh, cover i'm not writing here uh, i'll write layer three layer three and then layer two this is layer two layer two cover okay so when i type a ping i'll tell you guys uh, when generally uh, in a ping packet right in a ping packet what payload will be there because we simply understand like hi you now this pc saying hi to this pc but actually it is not a high message it is it can be any random data so generally if you capture the ping packet and see uh, inside that you will have a random data with it so uh, what is a payload when i send a ping request so what is going to be inside the payload it's going to be a random data some junk data it can be okay and then uh, the protocol is going to be icmp okay so we discussed about uh, two protocols already one is tcp the other one is udp okay so these are the two protocols that we discussed but uh, again, there is there are many other protocols also. Now I'm introducing about one more protocol called ICMP, Internet Control Message Protocol. Okay, we'll talk about this guy if possible. Time permits, we'll talk about this guy. But mostly, I won't uh, think that we don't have time to discuss everything here. So ICMP protocol is basically a protocol that is used by a ping request. So whenever you use ping, uh, it is not using TCP. It is not using the UDP either. It is using something called ICMP. Okay, so just these are just facts according to you guys because we don't have enough time to discuss everything in depth here so the protocol is going to be icmp okay so yes let's understand this here that the payload of a, when i give this command right when i just type ping 191.1.3 and when i give him when i hit enter what happens is the pc will create that packet correct so random data payload protocol will be icmp now uh, i want you guys to guess the source and destination okay what will be the source ip if you guessed it 1.2 then you guys are correct 1.2 will be the source ip right okay what is the destination ip destination ip is 1.3 okay so now what is the source mac address guys? because now layer 3 cover is filled now above that we have, we have to fill a layer to, we have to fill a layer to cover yeah what will be the source mac address all two okay we all know right i'm just simply writing this 5000 all two but i'm simply saying it as all two okay what is the destination mac address the destination MAC address, we are trying to ping 1.3. We are trying to ping this guy. He is the destination. So maybe most of you might guess that the destination MAC address will be all four. The destination MAC address is all four. That is what, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> I got confused with the chat case. I was seeing the chat message also. Uh, I got confused with it. Yeah, it's going to be all three. Sorry, extremely sorry uh, for confusing. It's all three, right? Yeah, because we are trying to send ping, ping, ping request to this guy and then this case market this is all three see but what generally happens is guys um this pc when he was trying to create a payload and then a, a layer four cover and then a layer three cover and at last when he fills the layer to cover my question is how will or how we are expecting this pc to know the mac address of this device just just see you guys have a diagram in front of you we have a diagram so in the diagram we know this is the destination pc and we have the mac address of this pc which is all three <clears throat> but my question is how will this pc know that how will this pc know that okay see i can see few guys are answering in the chat right but those things are wrong guys please wait Muhams, you you're not correct actually uh please wait i can also see jitendra saying that broadcast and all so please wait, let me explain. There are many guys, they have a very wrong understanding about ARP. Okay. So they might have studied from some YouTube content from a not a qualified uh, trainer. But that's wrong. So please let me uh, tell you it. Okay. What happens is, so uh, when the PC started filling it, the, the moment, 
the moment when I type this command, the PC will fill the payload, which is a random data. And then uh, it will uh, fill the layer three cover. Layer four, we are skipping a tree here. Uh, layer three, he'll put uh, ICMP source IP address will be 1.2, destination IP will be 1.3. Okay, how the PC knows the destination IP is? Now answer this question. How the PC knows the destination IP? Because in my command, I gave ping 1.3, correct? So in my command, I gave ping 1.3. So since this is the input, this is the input I gave, I typed that. So this becomes whatever you mentioned after the ping command, that is a destination IP. So there is no doubt in the PC knowing the destination IP is 1.3. But what is the destination? Source MAC address, of course, the PC knows his own MAC address, he can fill it. What is the destination MAC address? Did I mention my destination MAC address in the command, guys? My question is very simple. Did I mention the destination MAC address in my command? In the in my command, what I mentioned? I mentioned only the destination IP, correct? I mentioned only the destination IP address. So with that command, the PC can fill only the destination IP. It cannot fill the destination MAC address. So right now, this field is unknown. It is unknown to the PC. Understand? It is unknown. Right now, the destination MAC address is not known. So can we send the packet without the destination MAC address? If I send, right, assume that uh, <clears throat> this field is not filled by the PC. Okay, it, full, it, it took a layer to cover. In that layer to cover, he filled only uh, all two. He didn't fill all. He didn't fill the destination MAC address. Now the packet is what? Now this packet is incomplete. This is incomplete, right? So now, uh, can I send the incomplete packet to the switch, guys? Can I send it? If I send the incomplete packet to the switch, what the switch will do? The switch will drop the packet, correct? So we cannot send an incomplete packet out of the network, or we cannot send it into the network. So uh, what the PC should do right now is the PC somehow the PC have to find the destination MAC address. This PC should somehow find the destination MAC address. For that, what he will be using is he will be doing ARP address the solution protocol he'll be sending a r request okay yes so here uh once uh i give this command okay okay so yes once i give this command you get the uh you know everything is actually filled everything is actually filled okay but finally the pc is unable to fill the destination address now what he does is assume guys this is a a uh, ping request that is in blue color, right? This is a ping request. So blue for ping, ping in blue. Okay. And ARP, I'm just going to refer in pink color. ARP in pink color. Okay. Yeah. Got the point. So now I'm trying to send the ping request, but what I don't have, I don't have the destination MAC address. So I cannot send my ping request outside. So what I'm doing is before sending the ping request, I'm sending one more request called ARP request asking a hey, who is or where is 1.3. So the simple question is, which NIC, which NIC has got, has got 1.3 IP? So I'm asking the, which means what is NIC case? So what is the MAC address? A unique ID for an NIC, right? So the MAC address refers to the NIC. So now this PC is sending a broadcast message. What is broadcast? Broadcast means goes to everyone in the network. This guy will send a broadcast message. I'm writing it like BC, broadcast message. And that broadcast message is going to go to every other device in the network. It's going to go to everyone. The switch will send it to everyone. Right here, we have only these many PCs. If you have, I don't know, 20, 30 PCs, all the PCs will be getting the broadcast. So, which means what happens? Listen to me clearly. The PC, I typed this command. What next happens? The PC filled all these things. But the PC is unable to fill this point. So, since it is unable to fill this point, the ping request cannot be sent outside. Now, it is sending a ARP request, which is a broadcast packet, asking for what? which NIC has got 1.3 IP. Now this broadcast packet will go to all the PCs now. Okay, now uh, which NIC will respond? Do you think this NIC will respond to that? No, because why? Because what this IP address is? This IP address is 1.4. So which NIC will respond? Will this NIC respond for that? Yes, because why? Because this IP address is what? 1.3. So now what happens is, the ARP request when tried this this blue color one that you see in this direction in this direction that is an ARP request. Now I'm gonna write an ARP reply. Okay, so ARP reply will not be a broadcast. It directly goes to the switch, and then from there it goes to the let, let me write like this. So it goes to the switch ARP reply, and it comes over here. Okay, so once the ARP reply comes to the uh, PC, this is where in what this PC is, what is this ARP reply? This is ARP request case. This is our ARP, ARP request. ARP request is gonna look like this. How the R reply is going to look like? The reply is going to look like this. Or maybe let me write it over here. 
the reply is going to sorry reply is going to look like this what it's going to have okay 1.3 is at which nic all three nic this is what the reply is so this is a reply that's going to come from here to here okay so now this reply this reply is going to come from 1.3 pc to 1.2 pc so now 1.2 pc understands that uh yeah this pc now after getting an r reply in that r reply what message is there one point is mac address is what one point is mac address is all three okay after knowing it after knowing it only it will fill all three over here you got the idea okay so the pc you guys saw the diagram and you told me the destination mac address is all three but will the pc know that just like that no what the pc will do it have to send an r request broadcast asking for where is 1.3 and Every other device will drop it. Only one guy will respond that uh, he will say that 1.3 is that all day. Okay. Let me just undo everything and and, and I'm just going to open the slide one more time. Real quick, we'll discuss it. Just two minutes. We'll finish it. <clears throat> Usually, I'll, I'll uh, capture and show art request and all, but here we don't have time for that. So I'm just very basically going into the art. That is why I'm erasing these things and all. Because the more in depth you go, the more uh, time it comes up, consumes and it will take. So we don't have that much time over here. Okay, <clears throat> so yes, so now we have uh, this, okay, I was typing the ping command, ping 1.3, so as soon as I type 1.3, the payload will be filled as a random, data. it can be anything, the payload of the ping can be random, and what protocol it belongs to, it belongs to ICMP protocol, what is the source AP, who is sending the ping request, this guy. What is the destination if you use the target given in the command as 1.3? So what is the source MAC address? All two. What is the destination MAC address? Right now, it is unknown. We don't know the MAC address of the destination device. So what happens? The ping request, which is in blue color, stays inside the uh, PC itself. And then we have an ARP request that's going to go out and find it out. So the ARP request will go outside. Asking for what? Asking for? This is an ARP request, right? ARP request. Okay, asking for what? Which NIC has IP 1.3? This is what the question is, right? So this guy sends an ARP request, PC sends it, goes as a broadcast, and who will respond? Only this guy will respond because others are not 1.3. This guy will say what? Now ARP reply. Okay, so let me write the ARP reply over here. What ARP reply says? ARP reply says 1.3 is that where? Is that? all three this is a mac address right it's basically 5000 all three okay yeah so now this ARP response comes yeah we are talking about same network only different network it, it is different so i'm talking about same network only human okay so yes uh it goes uh response comes ARP response comes back to the pc and after that you can see that the destination mac address is unknown earlier now the destination mac address is filled okay this is nothing but all three now Okay, and then the ping packet leaves this PC, goes over the switch. Now only ping is traveling. Can you understand what happened first? ARP request and reply happened. After knowing the MAC address of 1.3, now only we are sending the ping request. Okay, so the reply, ping reply is going to come and it's going to come away, right? And also understand, guys, once the ARP is done, once the ARP request and reply is done, the PC will maintain a table called ARP table, ARP table, ARP iPhone A and ARP iPhone A. So that's the command to see the R table. Right, I'll show you this also now. R table, they're gonna have the uh, R table. So what they'll do is in that R table, uh, once they learn someone's MAC address, they'll store it. So now this guy came to know whose MAC address. He was sending an R request now. He sent an R request. He got an R reply. So whose MAC address he'll come to know? He learned whose MAC address. One point is MAC address. What is it? All three. He'll store that in the table. Why should he store that in the table? Later, if you want, you can use it. Now, again, don't have to do ARP for the next communication. Okay, what MAC address, what, what my app, what, what MAC address he came to know? Yeah, so he came to about 1.2's MAC address, which is all two. So ARP, iPhone A, and if you check, you will be able to see the MAC address of this guy. So what is basically this is, guys, ARP, iPhone A is the table. Whoever is, Mac, whoever, is Mac, whoever is MAC address you learned, you will store that in the table. So this is 1.2. He learned about 1.3's MAC address. He stored that in the table. And this guy is 1.3. He learned about whose MAC address? 
still on the board one point is my address that is altered they are storing in our table you will mean you will store the mac address of the other side person okay mac address of the person whom you learned okay yeah so that for the next time again you make a ping uh, you don't have to go and do arp again right you can take the mac you can take the uh packet from the r table you can take the mac address from the r table itself yeah. so real quick just uh two minutes uh two three minutes i'll just do this and i'll show you and also i'm going to show you the packet captures also here uh, let me start all these devices okay packet capture facility is also available uh maybe if you raise one you can make use of it Okay, so let me just go take this PC. Uh, this is not configured with IP address. So I'm just going to configure IP address 1.2255 or 255. The IP is not configured with this. So I'm just going to configure the IP address 191.68.1.1. .1. Okay, so here next PC, uh, SH, IF1 SH, 191.68. I'm just assigning IP address to these guys. I'm not doing anything technical here. 191.68.1.1. Okay, good. Let's go to this guy and configure 1.4. This guy is message on oh, no, sorry. 191.68.1.4, 1, right? If you're not understanding now, please watch the recordings one more time, guys. In the recordings, you can slowly watch it. Okay, so configure IP to all the devices. Now, what I'll do is I'll just go and check the R table of PCB. R hyphen A. And why it is empty? Because I never learned anyone's MAC address so far. Okay. Also, uh, I'll open the other PC on this side and I'll have it. Okay, I'm just opening 1.3. Uh, this guy is 1.3. The one that you see on the right side is 1.3, right? Okay. Okay, so you have 1.2 on the side. You have 1.3 on the side. Okay. So we'll go and see our table of 1.3, R Python. He also doesn't have anything. Because why? Because they never had any communication. Okay, now I'll tell you this. I'm just going to go to first PC now, 1.2. I'm trying to bring 1.3. Uh, three. Okay, also I'll make a Wireshark capture. Uh, most of you will not be able to understand what is that, but anyway, uh, I know uh, Wireshark is important. Unfortunately, this course, we're not going to do more into Wireshark. Okay, that's the best tool to learn networking. Okay, so the lab has got Wireshark feature also. So I'm just going to filter for ARP and IPMB. Just I'm showing you the capture rings. Okay. See, usually my full season echoes, uh, I, I, I explain this thing very elaborately, uh, but here we don't have time for it. So I'm just keeping it. Okay. Now you can see, I'll do control C to stop it. And can you see this case? Wait. Oh, how many of you noticed it? Okay. Can you see here? The time for the first ping reply to come, the time it took us 4.688 ms, okay, 4.6 milliseconds. And uh, why the other packets are somewhere around 1.8? Why is the first one around more? Can you guys guess why it is? Why the first packet is 4.8 m, 4.6 ms, and where the other guys are averaging 1.8, 1.6, 1.6? Why is this guy alone more? Because why? Because this is the first ping packet, right? Because in the first ping packet, you don't know who's a destination MAC address. So what doing? So first, you, instead of sending a uh, ping request first, what do you do? You send an ARP request. You send the ARP request. You get the ARP response. And then only you're sending this ping request. So that is why here alone, you it takes time. But once the ARP has been resolved, both the pieces, what they have? They have the ARP table, correct? Okay, so in that ARP table, it is told. So that is why further things, you know, it's not taking that much time. Okay. Yeah. So now uh, we'll see the R table of the devices again, please. Okay. So ARP iPhone A. Now can you see what MAC address he learned? One point. Uh, where is it? Called? Yeah. R Python. When I give R Python A, right? This guy learned one point three MAC address. He stored it. That is why next time when you want to go to 1.3, it doesn't need to ARP again. And same way what we are expecting here. Uh, one, if I go to 1.3 and if you give ARP iPhone, earlier it was empty, but now it is not empty because why? Because they had a communication with each other. Okay, very good. And also uh, you can see the captures over here, guys. Okay, so Wireshark captures are here. So these are the ping requests, the one that you see in the, uh, you know, uh, some, some sandal color or yellow color. 
that is an AI protocol, there is an ICMP. So I was trying to ping, but before I ping, what went outside? ARP went outside. And what was the destination? The destination was broadcast. And what it was asking for? It was asking for, it was asking for what? Who has 1.3? Who is 1.3? Where is 1.3? And can you see the ARP response came? What ARP response is? 1.3 is that 5,000 all three. And that is why when I click on this ping packet, right? When I click on this ping packet and I expand this layer two cover, I can see the destination MAC addresses 5,000 all three. Okay, so how did this guy come to know about this 5,000 all three? Because the previous packet had a response and that is the source, right? This packet is the source for this packet. Okay, yeah. So I'm, I'm briefly finishing it now here. Uh, tomorrow we'll talk about ARP different network. I'm not gonna continue ARP different network today. Uh, if you are really confused, go and watch the recording and say, I understand the nature of this course. It, uh, I told you, know, everything I spent. Uh, so far, I think we had some six sessions on, you know, but usually in my actual CNA classes, uh, I used to spend somewhere around uh, 25 hours plus before I come to this topic. So we have a very in-depth discussion in the previous classes and all. Like 25 hours plus we spend, and then only we come for ARP, and then only we come for uh, this setting and all. But here, uh, we just have spent very little amount of class, maybe eight hours, nine hours of class we completed, and now we came to ARP. But anyway, unfortunately, we cannot do anything. We have to understand things we learn. Okay. Yes. So I know you guys didn't understand what is Wireshark, but you can understand, not me sure. I you just understood that what is Wireshark, what is Wireshark, or you just came to know the name that is sufficient now. Okay. So ARP table and all we saw, we saw the uh pen records, everything was uh good. Okay. Yes. So we'll meet, I'll stop here. Tomorrow we'll continue with uh, ARP different network. And also we're going to discuss about something called uh, DNS and DHCP. This is what tomorrow's topic is. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. See you guys uh, tomorrow. Bye.